Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Well, if you're looking for something fun to do in February, we've got it. It's the Lancaster Roots and Blues Festival. And with us right now is director Rich Ruoff. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Well, you have a reputation for doing fun things in February when you used to do your Blues Festival. And now we have this Roots and Blues Festival. Yeah, we're lo looking forward to it. I mean, I ran a blues festival when I owned Chameleon Club for 17 years, and it was consistently my biggest weekend of the year. It was also the kind of music I like. Yeah. Now, we could expand the genre a little bit and call it Roots and Blues. Okay, so the weekend is actually Friday night and Saturday night, February 21st and 22nd, correct? Correct. And it's going to be downtown Lancaster in several different venues. Yeah, Lancaster, you know, it, it actually brought me back, because I've, I've told the club over 10 years ago, and I, I've always kept my hand in music a little bit, but this brought me back in a big way. There's all these new venues that have been popping up. Of course, the Convention Center, it's, it's beautiful. The Ware Center is a world-class performing arts hall. Uh, of course, Chameleon Club. Right. And there's the new Telus 360, mm -hmm. which has two stages. And there's the Federal Tap House, which is basically a beer hall, but you gotta have a beer hall. So. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And they've got a nice space there that really works well for yeah, them too. Nice. Yes. So my understanding is it's 50, different artists over these venues, right? I actually, I went a little crazy, I booked 56 artists. Oh, now 56, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, 56 artists. Now we were saying it's blues and it's also roots. Define roots. Roots is kind of a broad, generic term, but it covers Americana music, folk, jazz. Uh, of course, I've expanded my definition of it to include things like rockabilly, uh, and I even threw in some Roots reggae bands. So we're covering everything. I even have a polka band coming. Oh, so. all right. So it is something for everyone. Now, this is for 21 and above, except for the ones at the Wear Center. Is that correct? Right. The Wear Center doesn't have a liquor license. So if you were under 21, you could check out the shows there. But it's predominantly an adult festival. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's basically Friday night and Saturday nights, right? Correct. Okay. What I thought was really interesting, and I didn't realize this, that the entire city of Lancaster is a national historic district. District. It's the only city in the U.S. with that designation. Yeah, the Victorian architecture is, I think, what earned us that reputation or that designation. And I know from running the club all those years and doing all these touring artists from all over the world, they would always be amazed. Like, you know, we all grew up around here, we live around here, and so we get used to it. But if you come in from other areas of the country and the world, it's actually really refreshing to see the city. It, it, it really stands out. Yeah, it really does. Now, how did all of this come together? This was no easy feat. I mean, you are used to booking gigs and, and finding artists, but this, this was a big endeavor. Yeah, I mean, special events is my thing. I've been doing it uh -huh. since I sold the club. Of course, I booked 3,700 bands over the years while running the club. Wow. Uh, and then since then, I've been putting on bicycle races and triathlons and running events. Uh, so it's all logistics, and this is one big operation in logistics. It is a big operation yeah. in logistics. How many people do you have helping you with this? Uh, well, you know, that weekend, there'll mm -hmm. probably be 150, you know, combination of staff and volunteers. Okay. Uh, I have a core group of about four people helping me right now. All right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the artists and some of the groups that we're going to hear when they are here. If we look at that first February, um, the February 21st, and we're looking at the Chameleon Club, and there's two different venues there. There's the main venue and also the Lizard Lounge, right? Correct. So there's going to be different things going on there. Yes. Okay, the Silverhawks, how do you describe them? I would call them a veteran band. You know, like, we're doing a variety of musicians. Uh, I'm doing young people. I'm doing middle-aged people. The Silverhawks are veteran musicians from the central Pennsylvania area. Mm -hmm. And you know they know they're not going to get a record deal anymore. They're just playing because they love it and they're really good at it. Yeah. So I thought, you know, let's give these guys a nod and give them a chance. And it's an eleven-piece band, and there aren't many eleven-piece bands out there. So no, there really aren't. Should be a lot of fun. Great full sound. Now, Shrimp Boat had just played downtown Lancaster for New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. They're going to be appearing too. Yeah, they're one of the newer bands in the area, and I really love that band. So. Funk, right? They kind of like a funk. Funk black, and soul, soul and, and a little bit of rock and roll. Yeah. yeah. All mixed up together. It has kind of a Memphis sound to it, uh, Memphis slash Muscle Shoals studio, okay. you know, out of Alabama. Parker Millsap. He's a uh, young up-and-coming folk artist. Uh, what a tremendous voice, and he's from Oklahoma. He's 20 years old, uh, and there's a real buzz on him in the folk community. Uh, as soon as I heard it, and you know, I got recommended to him by Robert Bobby, who's a legendary older singer in this area. And he's actually playing the festival as well. He's going to introduce Parker on Saturday night. Okay. But uh, 
I, as soon as I heard him, I said, oh, we got to get this kid. Yeah. He's going to be a big star. Yeah. Well, you were always really good at that, Rich, because you, you had a pulse on up-and-coming artists that then later just Thank hit it you. big. Thank you. I got some of it's luck, but I, I have developed kind of a sixth sense for that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I can usually hear an artist young and early before they're polished and before they've had a success or a record deal. And I can say, this, this band's probably going to go places. Okay. And I've had a pretty good success, track record in that. that yeah. Area. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is this Carsey, is it Blanton? Carsey Blanton. Blanton, okay. She's fabulous. Uh, she's a pop artist in the sense of the great songwriters from the 40s and 50s. Mm. Uh, and she can, she can go into pop, she can go into jazzy dance, and she can do, she's, a, she's making a new jazz record right now, but when okay. she plays here, she'll play a combination of things that she does. Uh, real personable, like has a lot of energy on stage, and people love her. Mm. I'm very excited to have her here. Oh, that's excellent, excellent. And a favorite from this area that's been here many times, Clarence Spadey's gonna be around? Clarence Spadey is back. Uh, I'm a huge fan of his. I think he's one of the very best blues talents in the Mid-Atlantic region. Uh, and I'm glad to see him. I have him back for two nights. He's working with the best band he's ever worked with. It's uh, some, we call them cats from New York City, uh -huh. but really A-list players and should be a fabulous night. Well, if somebody hasn't heard of him before, how would you describe his play? Well, he's a blues guitar player. Uh, <clears throat> there's, a, there's a jazz twinge to it, mm -hmm. but he, he can rip into a Henrik song and do it justice. Wow. Like, we had him at the Effort of Main Theater a few years ago. And uh, he was opening up for Shem uh, Shamika Copeland, who's a national act. And uh, he literally got a standing ovation in the middle of the opening set. And that, that's a rare thing. Wow, that yeah. is a rare thing. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Well, you also have some Grammy Award winners that are here, too. Yeah, we have a, a lot of Grammy Award winners and nominees. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the, the big name on Saturday night in the convention center on the Robert Johnson stage <clears throat> is going to be, excuse me, uh, Johnny Winner. Uh, three-time Grammy winner, Johnny Winner, uh, and that's his 70th birthday. Oh, wow. Uh, he actually turned 70 at midnight, so <laughs> we're throwing a party a little early. <clears throat> Excuse uh -huh. me. We'll probably do a balloon drop for him. Oh, wow. Uh, and then he asked if I could bring a special guest in, so we're bringing in James Cotton, uh, who's arguably the best harmonica player in the world, blues harmonica player in the world. And uh, James, <clears throat> he's a veteran musician. He's 78 years old. He's been in Lancaster four times before, three times before, this will be his fourth time. Uh -huh. I booked him all the shows. Sure. But in the 70s, Johnny Winter produced uh, Muddy Waters albums, the legendary blues band, uh, and they won Grammy Awards because they were so well received, and James Cotton played on those records. So to have him come back and play with Johnny Winter will be a real treat. Yeah. Some other, uh, other uh, Grammy winners would be Loudon Wainwright III. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a kind of a folk artist, uh, but he, he sings funny songs, and he's been around a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even going back to the 70s, uh, he appeared on the TV show MASH uh, sure. a few times, right? Uh, we're doing a guy uh, from Louisiana, Chris Thomas King, mm -hmm. and he was uh, in the movie Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, and he won a Grammy Award as well. Uh, and we're doing Brave Combo, which is a longtime favorite for people from Lancaster. But they're from Denton, Texas, mm -hmm. and they're kind of a polka rock band. Uh, they played at Long's Park. Okay. The Grammy Award that they won was recorded for a record that was recorded live on the stage at Chameleon Club in the 90s. <coughs> really? And we just gave them the tape, and they liked it so much they released the one single off it, and that was the single that won the Grammy Award for them. So that's got to make you feel good too. Yeah, it's really cool to, to be see, a part yeah. of all that. Yep. Yeah, the whole process, the whole process. There's also a Baby Soda. New Baby York. Soda, fun New York, what you call street jazz. Uh, they're young musicians, but they play kind of a forty style jazz, and it's 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 really good, and they're great musicians too. So defining street jazz would be. Wow. Uh, think New Orleans. Okay. Yeah. Um, the, All right. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. I, I, I get the whole visual. <laughs> the whole me. visual with that, too. Um, Tim Warfield's organ band. Tim Warfield, if anybody follows the jazz scene in Central PA, um, he's been a tenor sax player for many years, and he used to play the jazz series at Chameleon Club 20 years ago. Uh, and his career's been extensive, and he's done well. And I'm glad to be working with him again. But the organ band is, is probably his most popular 
you know, configuration. These jazz artists, they, you know, they can do solo stuff, they can do trios, they can do, but with the organ band, it's a big, powerful sound and it should be a blast. And what he's phenomenal, too. He's really good. Yeah. We're going to put the website up on the screen so you can go there and find out everything about this festival that's coming up on February 21st and the 22nd, Lancaster Roots and Blues. And we're also going to tell you when we come back more artists that are going to be there and how really affordable this is. Stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about this fabulous festival that's coming up in February, just when we're all going crazy and need something to do in downtown Lancaster. It's the Lancaster Roots and Blues Festival, and it is Friday night, February 21st, and Saturday, February 22nd. We're with the director, Rich Ruoff. And Rich, you have worked really hard to make this affordable for all of us. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I've been involved with the music business off and on for over 30 years now, and I look at some ticket pricing for a lot of events these days and it seems astronomically high. Mm -hmm. And so I came at this right from the beginning to try and keep the ticket prices as low as possible and give a real value. And I think I've done that. Yeah, you have. And we can find out more about that when you go on the website. Yeah. There are different levels and things. You can just go for something or you can go to many different things. Too. And even little things like where uh, if you buy your tickets online, which most people do these days, the, there's a service charge, and that service charge can vary wildly from $2 to $12, and it, it always seemed ridiculous when it got high like that. So right. I worked very hard to get a ticketing company that keeps the service charge down to like $2 or depending on how many tickets you get. You know, That's but, great. Yeah. Excellent, so. excellent, excellent. Let's talk more about some of these exciting bands that you have here. Postmodern Jukebox. You said they've been getting a lot of hits. Yeah, they're having, they, they've are having. they been producing videos all fall, or actually all year, and they'll take established pop hits on the radio and they'll rework them with a different style, a jazz style or a country style. And they're, they're fabulous New York City musicians. And they make these videos and they get a lot of hits on YouTube, like millions and millions of hits. And we're the first date they've played out, out of New York City in probably forever. Uh, I think it's their first time out in New York City, and so we're very excited to have them. So what we're going to hear by them is what fairly eclectic, I would assume, right? Yeah, very eclectic, uh, but their their arrangements are just magnificent. Okay, and yeah. that's the cool part we really need to check out. Okay, there's also someone who's coming from Brazil. It's her first time in the United States, right? Yeah, Tiffany Harp. She's a harmonica player, a blues harmonica player. A couple of strange things about that. She's a woman. There aren't that many blues harmonica players. Um, female blues harmonica players. She's very good, and she's from Brazil, which really makes her rare. Uh, but she loves Chicago blues, and she's mastered it. Wow. Uh, and she just recorded a new record, which will come out in the spring, but it was recorded in Germany, and was produced by Tino Gonzalez. Uh, for blues fans from the U.S., they would remember that name. He was a very popular artist in this region uh, back in the 90s. Mm -hmm. But he lives in Germany now, and he's a producer. Oh, excellent. Well, speaking of blues, having Octavia there with her band. Well, Octavia is would be the other female blues <laughs> harmonica player. But I can exactly. tell you, over the years, I've done most of the best blues harmonica players uh, at Chameleon Club over the years. And I've never, uh, I mean, now we have two good, solid women players, which is yeah. great. Which yeah. is great for this festival, too. Really, really good for this festival, too. Heritage Blues Quintet. They are a, a new band, uh, relatively new. They're old. Some of them are older, but they produced their debut album this year, and it was nominated for Best Blues Album uh, for the Grammy Awards. Oh, that's exciting. Lake Street Dive is what? Fabulous band. Uh, kind of a 40s jazz thing as well. They'll touch into it. The, the lead vocalist, she is amazing, like a great once-in-a-generation singer. Mm. And they have their debut album coming out in February. They're going to be on the Colbert Report on February 5th. They're, they're recording Mountain Stage in mid-February. They're going to be on David Letterman the night before they play at Lancaster, at Lancaster Roots and Blues. How cool is that? That's very cool. <laughs> That's very cool. Scott Pemberton Trio. He is an up-and-coming up guitar hero uh, out of Portland, Oregon. And he's experimental, but it's very listenable. Uh, some people think of Pink Floyd. Uh, he's gotten comparisons, uh, favorable comparisons to Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. He's a he's a real star. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Who is Samantha Fish? Samantha Fish. Uh, she's a blues guitar player, and her, she's tearing up. Her records are selling really well. She plays the whole country. Uh, and she's very well known. Uh, she was awarded uh, best new blues album last year, 
and uh, we're lucky to have her. She's 24 years old, but she can really play the guitar. Wow, that's excellent. That's really good. Local um, name that we may know, Marion Coco Coleman is going to be there. Yes, yes. And she's doing some different things these days too, isn't she? Well, I mean, Pretty eclectic. I, I think of her as a jazz artist, but you know, jazz is really expansive these yes. days and you can go into different uh, genres with that. Uh -huh. you know, but what a fabulous singer. Yeah, and she's got a little bit of world in there too from right. what I hear from her last CD release too. Yes. Which is very cool. Miss Melanie and the Valley Rats. Wow. Some of people may remember, especially people who went to Penn State uh, up in uh, Nittany, uh, you know, the Penn State College, uh -huh. uh, there was an artist called Queen Bee and the Blue Hornets yes. back in the day. Uh, unfortunately, Queen Bee herself passed away, mm -hmm. but Mark uh, Ross, the guitar player in that band, who was always the leader of that band, uh, has formed a new band, and he has a new artist, and she's also fabulous, and a different style, but still blues, uh, and Miss Melanie, and they are coming back, and they're gonna play for us, and they have a new record coming out, and wonderful stuff. I remember the energy that band used to have yes. performing live. Yeah. Really, really good stuff. Gas House Gorillas. I love the names of these bands. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rock, rock and roll band with a kind of a rockabilly twist. Uh -huh. A lot of energy. Uh, they're road warriors. They tour year round all over the country, playing a lot of the bars. They're on a local record label. They're not from Lancaster, but they uh, they play on Lanark Records. Okay. Which is a local uh, label, which is actually a national or international label that specializes in rockabilly. Oh, excellent. Well, you've got some reggae, too. Cultural reggae band. Uh, culture. Culture uh, reggae yeah. band. Culture reggae band. They are from Jamaica. Rolling Stone magazine Ooh. called their album uh, one of the top 100 albums of all time. Uh, they're considered one of the top 10 reggae bands of all time. and. They're a great harmony reggae band. They sing harmonies that are fabulous. Uh, so they have, they have a lot of legs and a lot of history. Wow. You know. Well, speaking of harmony, tell me about Harmonious Whale. Harmonious Whale is from Wisconsin, and they are a folk, jazz, swing music. Uh, very good, a lot of fun. And who's coming in from Italy? Yes, and I have to read that one because I have a hard time pronouncing his That's name. That's why I was going to get but you to say he's it. He's Gennaro Porcelli. Porcelli, yes. Uh, he's actually played around here once before, and uh, he's excited to be coming back. Uh, he's a great blues guitar player. So blues guitar. Okay. Yeah. Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones. Sugar Ray and the Blue Tones, two-time Grammy nominee. He's uh, one of the world's best harmonica players, uh, and he is from the New England area. I think Rhode Island, but people f frequently think he's from Boston because he plays in Boston a lot. Okay. But uh, we're excited to have him back. Also, Steve Geiger, uh, another fabulous harmonica player, will be playing here as well. What about um, Wayfarer Experiment? Wayfarer Experiment is a new band from the area, and we really like their, they're taking a lot of risk musically and they're nailing it, and uh, that's exciting to see. So we're definitely, you know, you know, we wanted to, when we put this festival together, we wanted to do a little bit of local, a little bit of regional, mm -hmm. and of course a lot of nationals and major bands. But this would be one of the local bands that we're giving a really good shot for. So when you say they're doing some experiments, what's their instrumentation, or what's what well, are they putting? Well, there's a Robin Chambers on violin. Oh, okay. uh, I believe there's a mandolin. Uh, it's acoustic for the most part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a trap snare uh, drum set uh, and acoustic guitar. Dana Alexandra. She's uh, an up-and-coming artist, uh, and she's ba she's based from York, mm -hmm. uh, and really fun. She touches on rock and roll, uh, but a little bit of a folk thing going on, almost a little bit of a country thing going on. She touches on a lot of areas. Uh, the neat thing about her is she's on a new record label that got started by a band called Live, yes. and they're in York, and they built this fabulous studio in York. Uh, and they're getting things rolling with her. And that's the, I think, if not the first artist, one of the first artists they've signed to their new label. Wow. Yeah. That's excellent. That's exciting. For those who are just joining us, this is the first 
<laughs> to be an annual, right? Yes. <laughs> Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music, which is going to be Friday and Saturday nights, February 21st and 22nd. And it's at a few different venues downtown. It's 50 artists now. 56. Uh, 56, we've decided up that. <laughs> 10 stages. There are some really beautiful places you're going to be performing, like over at the Ware Center. Yes. The, well, as we mentioned earlier, the Ware, Ware Center is a, a world-class cultural performing arts center. Uh, the main stage, which is called Steinman Hall, was designed by the uh, same acoustic architects that were involved, I believe, with mm -hmm. uh, the Kennedy Center and Lincoln Center. So the, the sound is just perfect. Uh, and then there's the upstairs uh, lounge that we're using for some of the artists, which has a great view of the city. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And then, of course, we have the Chameleon. We've got the Lizard Lounge and the main stage there. Federal Tap House, Correct. of course. Um, the convention center, there are two locations there, right? Right, we'll be in the main room. They call it Freedom Hall, but we're gonna call it the Robert Johnson stage. Okay. Uh, and then also down near the Thaddeus Stevens exhibit, we're building a stage and we're gonna call that the Thaddeus Stevens stage. Yeah, and then of course, Tell Us 360, which is two stages there and that's new. Right, that's Lancaster's newest yeah. venue uh, as far as the, you know, uh, yeah. They're really getting organized now. They have two good stages, yeah. great sound with uh, Claire Brothers sound, yeah. which is, cool. you know, of course, this from is going to be fun. Lancaster County. We're going to take a brief pause and we come back. A final thought. Stay with us. And we're back. We're talking about the Lancaster Roots and Blues, a festival of music coming up in February the 21st and 22nd. We're here with the director. No easy task to put this together, but we're so glad you did, Rich Ruoff. Thanks for having a me. A final thought about this. Um, this was a if you know nothing about music, or you're not a big music fan or blues or roots, this is an, an accessible festival in the sense that the quality is very high. And if you were in one room and looking at one stage and it wasn't your cup of tea, you could easily switch over to another space. And I guarantee you there's going to be some stuff that you're going to love. Yeah, it really is. And what we're going to do again is put that wonderful website up on the screen because you can literally go in there, find out all the places, the times, and all the information about the different artists too. Yeah, you can you can li literally you see videos on most of the artists and see the photos and read their bios, see where they're from, kind of learn about the styles of music that they're playing. There's a lot of information. Yeah, even start to check out some of their clips and see what you're in for for that night too. Right. And I'd like to also thank you so much for keeping the tickets affordable for everybody. And once you get on the website, you're going to see how affordable they truly are. And like you said, you can bop from one thing to the other. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and you know, also you can buy for one night yep. or you can buy for two nights. So you have choices. Yeah. Yeah. So bring your friends, go by yourself, whatever. You'll make new friends out there too. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much once again. Thank and you much very success much. with this. Looking forward to it in February. We'd like to say thank you for joining us today. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines. And remember, keep looking behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.